Um, so uh, I'm only a small um, bit player in um, today's event, but um, it was great to be able to combine both um, the sort of information sharing for the hackathon, but also with members of the public being able to come in and uh, see some of the issues that I, um, I hope that uh, those who are uh, mining data and uh, talking at length over several hours might be interested in covering. I know that the people who are part of the hackathon have also got quite a lot of uh, data sets and data sources. So I'm just going to point to one particular issue, um, and that's in bold behind me, and that really is um, the role of um, smart technologies in addressing transport and congestion, because in many ways that's the most intractable, intractable problem that the city uh, and Greater Cambridge area faces. So if anybody comes up with any good ideas, then um, we're very interested, um, as I'll say as part of my presentation. Uh, when I came to Cambridge, it was in 1990, 25 years ago, and my job then was essentially about behaviour change, because the job that attracted me to Cambridge was to be the first recycling officer for the county council. And in many ways, issues of transport are quite similar. They're about behaviour. Um, and in, uh, I, in a way, uh, changing the way people uh, manage their bins and uh, get into recycling and uh, thinking about waste is a, a heck of a lot easier problem to tackle than transport. And trying to separate people from their cars um, uh, in terms of uh, trying to be aware of the impacts, particularly of cars in cities, is a huge challenge and not to be underestimated. And in, so essentially what I've wanted in part doing, particularly for the people who are part of uh, the hackathon, is really just to give a perspective from us as a city, uh, us as a council, um, about what some of the issues are. So uh, along with any choices of what are the key issues or questions, people can make up their own minds, people can, uh, and you've got the time to do that. Uh, you can judge what are the questions that matter, you can judge what the data that's matters, that, uh, that matters. Um, one of the things that matters to me is that also in Cambridge is another L. Herbert who was born actually on the same day as me, 60 years after I was born in August. Um, and what will life be like in 2030? And that isn't because we're trying to put the decisions off, but you can just try and, uh, it would be very hard for people in 2000 to imagine some of the features about Cambridge now. But, but what is life going to be like for Lily when she grows up or starts to uh, grow up in Cambridge? Um, and that is also the period that we're looking at, both in terms of planning and transport as a city and also as a wider Greater Cambridge region. So we are uh, a, a city of considerable magic. We are a, a wonderful city to uh, live in. We're also a city of amazing talents. Um, and so what's special about Cambridge? Uh, well, first of all, we are a city that uh, attracts um, big brains and great ideas people. So we are generating wealth from that, but the most important part of it for me is that we're actually helping solve a lot of the world's issues and problems, and um, we're networking with people across um, the planet. Two, uh, the city of magic in the sense that it's, it's got a lot of qualities that we want to protect and which transport is a real challenge to because the car is dominant. It's um, also dominant. Another feature that's dominant is uh, it's interesting to think about human behaviour patterns. We all go to work at the same time or we have arranged schools so that they all start at the same time. Um, people go to shops at the same time. So when we have, for instance, at the weekend, probably about this time, there will be areas of the city that are completely gridlocked with cars because people want to go shopping at the same time. So um, that was a slight distraction. We're also, we, we, should be do, we could be doing better, and the reason I got onto it, I was thinking about the best educated workforce on average in, in Britain. Um, it's interesting that as human beings that we love doing things at the same time, and maybe if we just thought about it, we could, particularly if we wanted to be able to move around and enjoy a city as wonderful as Cambridge, we'd actually try and do it at different times. Um, it is a, a place that people move to, and that's a great thing, because a lot of people move and they, they don't want to leave. But 
we've got these challenges. We've got uh, inequality in the city. We've particularly got a challenge, which I'm um, with one of my few political points of the afternoon, George Osborne is doing maximum damage to, um, and that is the delivery of affordable housing. And because of that, that immediately impacts on transport because people over the next 15 years will end up living 20, 40, 60 miles away. And how do they get into Cambridge, um, both to uh, work and for other reasons? So, uh, I'm gonna get my glasses out. Um, so, uh, what, will the, what will the city look like in 2030? What will it look like in 2050? This is just an aerial shot of the scale of development that's underway in the Cambridge Biomedical Campus. And the interesting looking building is going to be the AstraZeneca building when it's um, completed. But it just shows you the, um, the pace of uh, opportunity um, providing we're able to tackle issues of transport and housing. So I chair the City Deal Board as well as uh, I'm leader of the City Council currently and we've got up to £500 million. So one of the issues which I hope people who are looking at the data and the options and particularly people who are IT savvy, um, how do we use that money? Um, we're digging, we will be digging up quite a number of roads because we need to alter the balance of road space between cars, buses, cycling, and just generally improving the roads for the people who live on them as well, um, ultimately. Um, but we've got these, we've got, we're, we're playing a little bit of a game with government in the sense that they've said we can have 500 million, but if we don't get things right with the first 100 million in the next five years, we won't get to the rest of the money. But the simple challenge for people who are coming up with ideas using smart technology or smart engineering is how can we use money differently than just digging up roads and changing roads? How could we use a chunk of that money more effectively by uh, investing it in other ways, including assisting uh, behaviour change? And then just as context, um, we've got two local plans where we're about to publish updates on those. We have to link transport to where the housing, the jobs are going to be. We have to have a clear transport strategy. And then as on the other threads that we've got, we've got affordable homes, uh, the focus on skills, and I see Anne Bailey in the audience who's doing a marvellous job on aspects of that. Um, and we've got um, just the ability to, of necessity that we need to share the benefits of growth so that people, when somebody says to me, well, why are, you, why are you encouraging this growth? Why are you digging up my road? Why are you building homes at the end of my street? We have to be able to say what the benefits are to people. And that then spills into a wider partnership, which one of the great things for me about Cambridge is that people actually talk to each other. We all talk, we might have different politics, we might have different views about different issues, but we have councils, the community, business, the universities, and um, thankfully some reasonably outspoken MPs as well, um, actually championing the cause of the city. So we have to work as a team whilst um, everybody's entitled to challenge and to put their views, particularly if their neighbourhood is affected by some of this change. So we've, um, we continue to put to government the need for investment and particularly um, of linking up on transport. So here we've got um, the, and people can have a look at the different maps and diagrams of the city. What are some of the unmet transport challenges? Where should the funding be going? What are the priorities? And some of them for us are, are opening up uh, housing, but they're also opening up a railway and other connections to Addenbrooke's, not just the uh, station that we're promised <laughs> in the north of the city. Plus, um, Britain's a complicated place, it's a big country, it's pretty dysfunctional in many ways, and we've got organisations like Highways England in their redesign of the A14 and Network Rail in its overlord role on railways, who we have to have involved if we're going to make some progress too. And we've got the issue of devolution, um, although I'm not holding, that my, holding my breath on that, um, particularly because um, uh, we've got a government that's committed to cutting uh, total expenditure. So moving on to um, the next slide, um, that just uh, mentions the term tax increment financing. And the only reason I've got this in is 
we shouldn't have our ambitions limited by grants or a limited amount of money. <coughs> so th this concept of tax increment financing for an area like Cambridge is essentially around the theme, because we're going to be generating massive wealth in the future over the period of time from uh, the investments that are made by government, simply because of the innovation that exists in our city. Um, government should recognise the fact that if they put in a million or ten million into Cambridge now, it would have a, um, a £30 million payback on ten million in 15, 20 years' time. So the whole point, in particularly also in a time of austerity, is that it's a very good investment to invest now, a bit like taking out a mortgage, believing that Cambridge is a success. Anyway. Um, Cambridge is full of some really wonderful companies and many of these companies I think could be doing a lot more on the local smart technology agenda. Um, they are companies that are often um, doing wonderful things on smart cities and smart technology in other countries and in other parts of Britain and what we would like to do in working with uh, others is to bring a number of these companies much more into a partnership and it's great to see companies like Arm or a number of the other companies here, um, uh, all across this list, actually are community-minded, but we need to get them to do more. So you can't see this one very well, but life sciences is a big part of where we're going, and it connects right the way down towards Harlow, it connects over to Stevenage, it will connect right across to a lot of uh, operations in Newmarket, and, it's, it's, and, and if you look at the growth that's happening, a lot of it is south of the city. So in terms of where some of the fastest jobs growth is happening, it's happening at Granter Park and at uh, the Babraham Institute. And so we, but it's about connecting these places together. And sometimes it'll be about whether people actually have to get in vehicles to go from A to B. And as a city, we've got a very large travel to work area, which is this zone. It would be nice if I was actually the leader of that whole area. I mean, that's just power grabbing on my part. But, but it would actually simplify a lot of the decisions that we were, would be uh, able to take. Um, we're not terribly in favor of the mayoral model because of the fact that power might go to people's heads uh, were they ever elected, which might not happen anyway. But the, the whole point of that zone is that increasingly, um, and particularly because our industries um, and our uh, organisations employ a lot of um, stunning people um, based in London, um, we've got a travel to work zone which is actually on the edge of London now and we have a very large amount of um, reverse commuting, albeit that the data will tell whether or not that's big. And in terms of rail links, for instance, we have a wonderful link to Ely, and that has one of the biggest um, non-car commutes. It is the biggest non-car commute into the city every day. But it just gives people who are looking at transport as an issue, and I hope some will over the next 12 hours, um, uh, that they're actually looking at, well, how do people get in and out of Cambridge? And in, a, in the future, um, and I'm only... Um, uh, giving a, a, a judgment, not any data, uh, we would expect that London and Cambridge would actually be far better connected. Um, we've got half empty trains coming up from London, and even though London's got a housing crisis too, um, there are a lot of young people employed in uh, Cambridge who would prefer to live in London. I don't know why, um, maybe it's a, a busier, buzzy, more interesting place. Um, uh, there are in Cambridge there are 72,000 people in, in Greater Cambridge employed solely in research 24,000 in the public sector and in the universities and in the hospitals and 48,000 in the uh, private sector 72,000 uh, that's a lot of research and the estimate is that that will grow by 50% in the next 15 years so um, that's just a, a measure of some of the employment and these are, these are some of the commutes that it creates. Um, I haven't got time to go into the detail of the data, but the Mark MacDonald report, um, which the County Council has pulled together, it uh, includes a huge amount of data. And our particular focus is on the peak period, because that is when we have real challenges of congestion. And I will bet that um, in the latter part of November, we will see exactly the same gridlock on three or five afternoons that we suffered last November when we have the combination of um, people trying to commute out at the same time, 
Christmas shoppers, people who don't like to go out in the dark other than uh, feel safer in their cars. Um, and these are the daily numbers in the peak time. So, so into Cambridge, we've got 23,000 cars from people um, who live in South Cambridgeshire. We've got, because on the edge of Cambridge, they effectively create an iron ring, an iron fortress, um, because they're stuck in half-hour traffic queues, we actually have quite a lot of freedom for our people. Well, I'll just say that because it's my city. But, but the, we've got 20,000 people within Cambridge who travel within that peak period by car. Um, the roads in the morning are relatively freer. In the afternoon, they're not. And then in reverse, we've got 8,000 going out. We've got 7,000 coming in from East Cambridgeshire and 5,000 into South Cams. So from the combined total there, just from the two next districts, is uh, 11, 23,000 people travelling in from the next two districts by car, either into um, South Cambridgeshire uh, or Cambridge. So those are big, for our area, those are big numbers of cars. And there's a growing population. Uh, the plans talk about more housing. And the location, whilst we are we will build on every suitable area, sustainable location within the city. We will uh, almost fully protect the green belt because we don't believe that it is sustainable to build in, in almost all of the green belt. And some of the uh, housing for the near future is in satellites effectively. So it's, it's the underlying reason why we're in partnership between the city and our adjacent uh, district who completely surround us anyway. So that this just the, the, the purple dots just give you the issue one of another issue within the smart technology and the opportunities for addressing um, transport is that we are relying on these satellites um, certainly in the next 15 years. And here's one example which there hasn't been a house built yet, but there's going to be a school there soon. Um, and then there will be housing, and that's Northstow where there's proposals for about 10,000 homes and where it already has a guided bus, uh, which is the purpley spotty route that goes around the northern perimeter. So one of the questions, and, and I, I saw the excellent summary that um, Daniel helped provide for those that might in the hackathon be interested in looking at transport, is, well, what would it take to make buses more attractive to use? Um, and there's been a lot of doubting Thomases, and there have been some issues about the guided busway, but, it is hugely popular to the point that it is in sort of almost full use already and that is before this uh, development has actually been completed that it was largely um, proposed to be built for. Um, I'm sure there will be answers in smart management to improve its technology, um, in using technology to get more out. But you know, what would, why is it that some people have never been on a bus in, in their lives? Um, I probably don't want to take up too much of your time, but, but within the presentation, there's a few spare copies if people want to take one away. The, this is our road infrastructure and our rail infrastructure. Um, we haven't got a great say about the rail infrastructure, so some of the schemes are looking at the roads. This is the sort of complexity down the right-hand side of the various schemes that um, if people want to find them, they're on the uh, City Deal website. So we've got a list of projects which we're focusing on radials, but we can't succeed just by sort of revising those radial routes and giving bus priority. We've got a consultation starting in November, a call for evidence, people's views about ways of tackling more fundamentally the congestion, and I hope that from um, the next 24 hours we'll also get some interesting ideas about smart technology. And this is... Um, one of the uh, diagrams that's out of that excellent summary that Mark McDonald did, which is full of data about this challenge of the congestion peak periods. Um, we're getting more people moving as we grow, uh, but it's all about changing the modal shift to reduce uh, particularly that red uh, segment in 2001. So the principle is that we try and aim for a 20% reduction on the 2015 level of peak time car movement, simply so that the roads move on time. Um, but we, to do that, we have to make cycling, buses, and all of the other options more attractive. 
Um, there's an urban myth that if we didn't have schools in Cambridge, or children presumably, um, that we wouldn't have a tra transport problem because during the school holidays the system works pretty well. And the reason for that is it's just working at that um, uh, level with 20% of the people not there. It isn't that it's the schools, it's the fact that 20% of drivers are also taking um, holidays at the time. So it's, it's about achieving roads that are not polluted, that don't cause um, asthma and actually premature deaths, particularly um, with inaccurately assessed impacts from diesel vehicles. Um, so it's about changing the shape of transport. And a simple Australian diagram, um, and I would just use the phrase, two, uh, cars are just like a, a two metre by three metre metal box. There's very little road space in Cambridge. So if you compare on the right um, uh, the uh, numbers of people um, with the, the, say, the option in the middle of the numbers that actually can travel by bicycle or by um, bus um, in the same road space, I'm afraid it's a no-brainer. So uh, we'll continue to argue with the um, people, particularly in the, um, some of the comment boards on the local newspapers uh, website, who say that we've got to be nice to car drivers. Well, we would be if only we had the road space, and sadly we don't. So this is a list in no particular order of some of the options that we hope that we will be investigating in, the, in November. But there are also a list of some of the options um, that people in the hackathon can look at. So how can we change the usage of roads? What would happen if we charged people to drive in? What would happen if we charged people to park? There's huge amounts of free parking in the city. Um, how can we change the balance of parking in the city without making life uncomfortable for residents? Where, do we, where are the places we need to improve the uh, uh, capacity? But particularly, how are we changing behaviour and incentives? So there's a whole in interaction between trying to leave people as free as possible to live their lives, whilst at the same time, particularly at the peaks, um, recognising that we have to have this 20% reduction in cars. So in terms of getting to the point, well, where do smart cities come in? Well, some of it is the principle that we've got some great companies, we've got some great brains, we've got Ian Lewis here, but there, must, there is over 25, 30 leading world experts in the University of Cambridge. Um, we've got uh, discoveries this week of new forms of batteries, which will completely transform potentially electrical vehicles. We've got um, expertise in driverless vehicles, which has been trialled in Milton Keynes. Well, why hasn't it been trialled here? Well, um, we hope to address that with a bid together with Milton Keynes to try and get some more funding. Um, uh, we will see what happens, um, but it's a large chunk of funding if we win a national bid with them and Leeds. We've got individuals here, and we've got the councils, particularly the work that Noel and Daniel have done in the excellent um, Connecting Cambridgeshire initiative. And the three themes for me, and I don't want to mean to categorise um, overly, others may uh, look at these issues differently. We can re-engineer the roads. The university, for instance, only lets people into its car parks now if they've got the right smartphone with them or the right phone. So they, um, I'll wind up. Um, so, so we've got smart engineering options. We've got um, clearly information which people need. At the moment, you come into Cambridge Railway Station on a train, you're not connected, you can't get information, you aren't being given choices as to how you travel, and there's all of Noel and Daniel's work on connectivity. So there's a couple of diagrams which they've shared elsewhere. There are clearly other routes to tackle some of Cambridge's challenges through sensors and smart information. And this was just one diagram that um, I think Daniel produced with Noel. Just, we've got all of these silos of data, but they're not connected. So we've got data on pollution, we've got data from our CCTVs, we've got lots of traffic signage data, it's the signalling that's at every junction, we've got all the parking data, we've got huge amounts of data, but it's not very well linked. So to come up with some great ideas, we do want that, and we will continue to look for ideas from smart technology that, that uh, merit investment. Um, every pound that can be better spent this way, um, there will be people on the City Deal Board who will argue the case. Um, you've got plenty of uh, data, but these are just some of the places. And there are alternative ideas. Better City Deal, Cambridge Bold, uh, Rail Futures have all got great ideas too. 
So thank you. I've slightly overrun my time, but I hope that you really enjoy the hackathon and that if you come up with some great ideas, I and others will listen to them. Thank you.